Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and you're welcome. My name is Zoe, most people know me as VA Reptiles, and today we're doing my annual year in review. This is gonna be 2020, 2020, 2020. Oh my gosh, 2020. The good, the bad, and the ugly, but we're also going to talk about 2021. What what are my plans for 2021? So joining me today is Snicket. You guys haven't really seen Snicket at all on this channel this whole past year, and we'll talk a little bit about that in just a minute. So let me grab my phone because I have a list of everything to talk about. Okay, so our list. We're going to talk about the bad first because, you know, 2020, there were some bad things in 2020. Um, honestly, the first thing that happened in 2020 should have foreshadowed all of 2020 for me. But we're going to talk about the bad so we can get that out of the way, talk about the good, and talk about 2021. So, the bad start off July. Unfortunately, we did lose Eugene, my veiled chameleon. I am happy to say that he's the only animal that was lost this year, but unhappy to say that it did happen. It was very upsetting. You know, for those of you that have been around since forever, you know that a chameleon was my absolute dream reptile. I waited 10 years to get a chameleon, to feel ready to get a chameleon. Got Eugene. We had a great, great while together, and unfortunately, he developed some health issues we weren't able to reverse, and we lost him. There's a whole video about what happened with Eugene. If you guys missed that, I want to go check that out. But yes, unfortunately, we lost Eugene this year. It was very sad. Just kind of hoping that we could, you know, get through the whole year and say that we didn't lose anyone. We made it halfway, and then we lost Eugene. So it's the end of June, beginning of July. And then the other bad thing that happened this year, oh, what a time. I did have to deal with snake mites. That's like a reptile keeper's worst fear is getting mites in their collection. I'm very grateful. Only three of my animals ended up with them. So you guys know I've got over 20 animals in my room. That could have been really, really bad. So I'm grateful only three of them ended up having them. But my lord, what a nightmare that was. So that is why we have Snicket out for this video and why you guys haven't seen Snicket at all this year. Snicket was, I think, the main culprit. He was the one that was absolutely loaded with mites. Kalua, my other ball python, as well as Crikey, my jeweled lacerta, ended up having mites. But they didn't have a whole lot. They just had a couple where Snicket was loaded. I feel so bad. I caught it very late with Snicket, so I think that's how it had time to spread to Kahlua and to um, Craigie. But banana ball pythons, if you are familiar with banana ball pythons, you know they're covered in these little freckles, little black dots all over their bodies. So it can be kind of difficult to spot mites on a snake that already is covered in black dots. So unfortunately I did catch it very late. Poor boy was absolutely loaded with mites. No idea where they came from. I quarantined all new animals around that time. You know, I had maybe one or two new animals, but no one had actually moved in here. Those new animals didn't have mites. You know, I hadn't gotten any new substrates, hadn't been to any expos or pet stores. So we have no idea, no idea where the mites came from. But unfortunately, Snicket ended up with them. Yeah, very bad time. So for months, this had been like March or April, I think, end of April maybe. And so yeah, for months, they lived in the basement, far, far away from all the animals. And then Snicket actually cleared up very quickly. Snicket and Kalua both did. So after, I think it might have been like three months, they moved up to our office. So they were still downstairs, still not up here. Um, and Crikey eventually, like maybe a week or two after, moved up to my sister's room to finish his quarantine there um, because the heater went in the room in the basement that I had them in. So they kind of bounced all over the house. Um, you guys know I've been doing a bunch of new upgrades. Unfortunately, with all those new upgrades, I ended up not having space for Snicket in here anymore until the new upgrades happened because I was moving things around. So now that the new upgrades are in, Snicket got to finally move back in. He moved back in just the other day. So this whole time, he's been living in our computer room poor bug all by himself so he finally finally this week moved back in to my room here and got an upgrade an unplanned upgrade because calypso's old bin 
fit on the shelf where I was going to put him. So he got to get a bigger enclosure. So all good things come to those who wait, apparently. So with that being said, we're moving into the good things. Um, so we welcomed six, one, two, three, four, five, six, six new animals to the family this year. Um, it all happened in the first half of the year. Second half of the year was all about the upgrades. So we welcomed Cusco, my blue tongue skink in February. Puka, my water dragon, my baby water dragon who is very sick. Um, we welcomed him in March and he's doing much better now. He's, you know, when we got him, he was very sick. His eyes were like all crusted over, very lethargic, um, respiratory infection. He's much, much better now. In May, we welcomed the Fat Tails, the two sisters, Suki and Yue, and they actually just got an upgrade, so I can't wait for you guys to see that video because I love that enclosure. In June, I got my dream snake. So that's a big thing from this year, one of the good things. I got my dream snake. I got a tri-colored hognose, rumple snake skin. Love him to death. He just moved into his big boy enclosure, so you guys can check out that video. It was one of the last ones, like two videos ago. Love him. So we got him in June. And the last one was Muppet in July. She was my birthday present to myself. She was a education animal that was being rehomed, or a past education animal being rehomed by a family that had just moved here. So we welcomed her to the family. What a joy that little girl is. So yeah. Those are the new animals from this year. And then like I said, ever since July, it has just been upgrade after upgrade after upgrade. This year was really the year of the upgrades. We ended up doing 16, 16 upgrades this year. So just a little recap on what upgrades happened this year. Queso, my leopard gecko got an upgrade. I do think I'm gonna end up upgrading her again though. But for now, this new year, we're gonna just relax, just enjoy life because I'm so sick of upgrades. Um, and that one was fine, it's just since I did the fat tails and like all the new ones, the like latest ones, seeing how big everything is, suddenly all my first upgrades seem too small and I wanna go even bigger. So <laughs> that's a plan for way later on. But anyway, okay, so my leopard gecko got her upgrade. Rumpel, like I said, just moved into his. Tootsie and Penelope both got upgrades this summer. Uh, Kalua got an upgrade at the very beginning of the year um, to the front opening tubs. I get lots of questions about those. I have a video on that. Um, Calypso, like I said, got two. She moved into a front opening tub like Kalua did. And then just this week, moved into her 4x2 PVC. Phoenix, my corn snake, this was a big one. So a dream of mine was to put Phoenix in a 4x2 enclosure. I said I would do it eventually. I finally did it. So she moved in this week. Zero, my milk snake, got his that I've been waiting on, his 40 gallon breeder. Um, I do want to move him into a 4x2 in the future, now that I've seen everyone else in the 4x2s. But he moved into his 40 gallon breeder with a full um, you know, background kit from Custom Reptile Habitats. Thank you again to Custom Reptile Habitats. I love, love, love their backgrounds. That's what Calypso actually has in her new enclosure, is a Custom Reptile Habitats background. Obsessed. So I do have an ambassador link in, or an affiliate link in the description below if you want to check out Custom Reptile Habitats. Highly recommend. Um, Pip and Potato, my two crested geckos, both got their bioactive upgrade at the beginning of this year. I don't like them very much, quite honestly. I would rather them mean something bigger. So that is going to be another future upgrade, again, is the geckos. Um, Cusco, my blue tongue skink, was one of the custom built ones I did this summer with my dad. Um, Chalupa as well, my Euromastix, another custom build. Tansy and Crikey. So the four enclosures that my dad and I built this year, the 4x2x2s, love them. They're great. I have several videos on those if you want to check them out. That happened at the end of the summer. And then like I said, the fat tails just got their new enclosure, you know, because cover your ears if you're a cohab police. They are living together. They live together their whole life. I come from the zoo field where animals are cohabbed. So if you do it right, it's not impossible. So you should be very cautious and take a lot of things into consideration. So they did get their new enclosure as well. 
And then a couple other little random good things from 2020. Um, Suki, my fat tail with the bubble foot, did get to see the vet. Ended up not being anything traumatic. She's just going to live with her bubble foot. Um, should anything start to go downhill, whether it starts growing or it starts affecting her quality of life, we'll revisit the situation. But right now, it's not affecting her quality of life, so we're going to leave it alone. Um, like I said, the water dragon's doing much better. Tinsel is still alive and healthy and eating well. So that's my sunbeam. Every year we get to make this video and she's still around is a good gear because if you guys aren't aware, sunbeam snakes are wild caught snakes and they tend not to do well in captivity. It's very, very uh, lucky if you can keep one alive for a while. And I've had Tinsel for two years now and the woman that had her before me had her for maybe a year. I don't really I don't really remember off the top of my head but yeah so she's been in captivity a while and doing really well so I'm very 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 grateful for that so every year that we have tinsel we celebrate I got a new fancy camera so what we're filming on right now thanks to my boyfriend um, I don't remember if that happened in December I think it happened at the beginning of this year so new fancy camera better quality love it love it um, I hit my social media goals for this year, as you guys know, we hit 5k here on YouTube, and 10, 15, 15k followers on Instagram, so that was super exciting, I couldn't even believe it. For those of you that aren't aware, I do have a major in digital media arts, specifically in graphic design, so I've been dying for an iPad for years, I love digital art, digital illustration. And so year after year, I put it on my Christmas list. Year after year, it doesn't quite happen because it's very pricey. So this year, I saved up and I bought myself an iPad, finally. So I started my digital illustration business, Iggy Illustrations. It's been so much fun. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from you guys on it. So yeah, that was awesome. We had another good year with Herpetology, my Etsy shop. Um, I'm trying to remember how many sales we had. It was like 172 or something like that. So super awesome. Thank you guys for continuously supporting the shop. Maybe I'll have more sales this year. That's my goal is to beat last year's uh, sale amount. And moving on to 2021. What can you expect in 2021? So one thing I'm definitely going to do, I know I said I was taking a break from upgrades. Um, so I'm not upgrading, but I'm redoing Percy's enclosure at my Cuban Night and all. I redid his the beginning of 2020, made it bioactive, it was all fun and games, now it looks like crap. So I want to completely tear it apart, redo it, you know his plants are dead. Um, I used a bio dude bag in the bottom to hold the dirt, but it's super tall so it's a lot of wasted space. So I want to trade it out for just a little bin of dirt, so that's going to be something I'm redoing very soon now that these um, other enclosures are here and set up and done. Um, the one other animal that I would really like to upgrade relatively soon would be Tinsel. Like I said, my Sunbeam. She is in a bin. She's doing really well. I'd like to see the enclosure a little bit bigger so she has a little bit more space to explore. Um, so whether or not that's something I do soon, I don't know. I don't really have a spot for it at this moment. So she might just stay in her bin for a little longer. Um, saving for a house. So I don't plan on getting new animals this year or anytime soon. I don't plan on like building or doing any crazy new upgrades anytime soon. Because now that I've done the ones that were like on my list, must do, I want a house. I want a reptile room slash office for herpetology and for YouTube and social media. So I want a house. So the goal for this year is to save money so I can have a house and move out of my parents' house. Because you guys will see in the upcoming room tour, a little crowded in here. It's a little more organized now that I've done the enclosure upgrades and like a lot of the enclosures just stack because they're nice and big. But you know, it'd be nice to have a bedroom and then a reptile room separate from each other. So you know, that'd be great. So that's the goal for this year. And once I have a house, I have one, two, three, four enclosures that will be first right away when I have a house. 
Kronk and Samoa, my two big boas. Um, Samoa is in a 4x2x1, and Kronk is in a 4x2x15 or 16. Not ideal. I don't like it. I know a lot of people keep their big snakes in like one foot tall enclosures. I hate it. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I want them to have room to climb, to express whatever behaviors they want. I hate this. So, you know, they're still growing right now. So this gives me time to get an idea because I think Samoa's going to be very big. So I keep going back and forth between what size enclosures I want to build for them. So this will give me some time to like think about it, kind of get an idea um, about of like how big maybe she'll get. But yeah, need a house ASAP because I hate these enclosures for them. Um, Arcadius, my iguana, do you guys know? The enclosure he's in right now was simply meant to travel back and forth with me to college. Obviously, I'm no longer in college, so he needs a permanent enclosure, one that's deeper. Um, the height on this one's good. I'd like to see it a little longer, but I don't think he's going to get very big. He's pretty stunted, um, but I definitely want it to be deeper. It's very handicap accessible, but it's like one way down, one way up. So I'd like to see a little more variety in his ability to climb around. So definitely Arcadius and, of course, Muppet, my Tegu. Right now she's in an enclosure that's much smaller than I kind of had hoped. Um, so I did build her a second story inside of it. But in my head, the measurement I had for the grow tent apparently was not really correct. So it's shorter than I wanted it to be. So yeah, not ideal. So all basically my big reptiles are going to be the first ones to get new enclosures as soon as I have a house. Um, so yeah. And that's the plan for that and then finally I save this for last my secret project I'm still not giving a whole bunch of details on it yet because I still have to finalize some details but I'll show you the artwork for it right here so you guys kind of get a little sneak peek at something I'm working on this is something I've actually been working on for like two years <laughs> so I'm very excited I'm trying to commit to going through with it this year um, you know enclosures are done you know, I'm back in my job, and back into skating, so I've kind of got my schedule figured out a little bit, getting used to that again over the past year. So this is the year I want to start this particular project, so more details to come on that, but I wanted to give you guys a little sneak peek. So as always, thank you guys for joining me for another video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button because I do have the rest of the enclosure upgrade videos coming, and then the long awaited for room tour so be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of that and we'll see you for the next video bye